story time. I've been debating on sharing this story with anyone outside of my small circle of people that were there. But I want to share my experience in hopes that it saves someone's life or to give understanding of what someone else has experienced. Late Fall 2010, in Northern Canada I went deep into the wilderness with my father and my eldest brother to hunt for moose. We left in the early morning, just before sunrise trying to cover as much distance as possible before nightfall. We traveled winding rivers and had to repeatedly portage over rapids all day, we decided to set up camp just over halfway to our destination. My father figured that we'd make the rest of the journey tomorrow. Well, when everyone bedded down for the night I decided to go grab some firewood and relieve myself down by the bank of the river, just out of reach of the light from the campfire. Out from the tree line, about 15 yards away, I could hear rustling in the bushes, I watched the area where I heard the noise and focused on that spot. I felt kind of funny dizzy or lightheaded, and I could smell this putrid stink, like old milk or rotten food. Then I saw the tree start to morph and move ever so slightly and began to, to take the shape of a head and slight facial features. My eyes began to adjust it to the darkness and along the tree line, I could hear this voice coming from there. I recognized it, the voice sounded like one of my relatives who had recently passed. The face took shape of my relative. Hello they said I've missed you, come see me I smiled and stepped forward Abbott but stopped to analyze the situation. My relative's face stopped smiling and became emotionless, the skin began to turn pale and peel away. Chunks of flesh from their cheeks began to fall away and I felt shock and fear overwhelm my body. I couldn't make sense of it at all so I started to back away and make my way to camp, I didn't realize at the time that I had been walking towards the voice and I was further away from the firelight. The voice became angry and began shouting at me to come here so I turned to run away but as I looked back one more time I saw the most disgusting thing I had ever seen, it was rotting flesh on gnawed bone, caved in eyes and a hollow chest cavity, this humanoid creature was tall and super thin. I ran as fast as I could, trying to yell for help but the fear had made my voice quiet and raspy, I ran along the river bank and I could hear the heavy breaths and the stomping feet from this thing right behind me, I made it onto the top of the river bank but it grabbed a hold of my leg as I jumped up. I gripped and tore the grass trying to lift myself and yelled as loud as I could then finally my voice came back and I yelled that someone has my leg. My brother woke up and ran over to where I was then he pulled me up and took me over to the fire. I was terrified, trying to explain what I saw and that it looked like my relative but not. I was trying to convince them that I wasn't seeing things but my brother nodded his head and said I saw it too, I know. That solidified it, he acknowledged that it was real. We stayed up all night after that, rifles loaded and close by, we packed up when the sun was coming up and went back home. We haven't shared that story with anyone out of fear of being labeled as crazy or liars. I've had nightmares and couldn't sleep for months afterwards, I would see things or dark figures looking into my window or hear whispers when I was walking home at night. Eventually I was seeing this dark figure daily, I went to medicine man or shaman for help but I've learned that the ceremonies only relieves it temporarily. Friends have given me everything from protection pouches to certain crystals. I found out that there's a strong possibility that I encountered a Wendigo. I learned that if you encounter one and survive, it attaches itself to you like a parasite. I learned that it could only do this if it touches you, which it did. Ever since that night, I've been on edge when I enter any forest or wooded area, which sucks because I loved being outdoors or hunting and in nature. Now I always feel like I need to keep my back against something when I'm out in the wild. Anyways, make your own conclusions about this. I've paid a price for being an ignorant child to the stories of old. They are real, I can attest to that. Stay safe everyone. This happened when I was 7 years old. I'm sharing it because my older brother reminded me of it, and now that I'm 24, I can't get it out of my head. This was very traumatic for me because after this event, a bunch of other things started to happen. This is how it started. 
Growing up and even now, I live in a haunted state and I lived five miles away from the most notoriously haunted forest. My mom used to tell my brothers and me about what she would hear while walking by the forest, the murders that happened, and how she used to see Pukwudgies. My older brother, 11 at the time, let's call him Dan, and I, 7 female, were watching TV in the living room. It was dark outside, it must have been a new moon. If you were sitting on the couch and looked to your right, you would see the glass sliding door, which had a view of the backyard. Mind you, it was an acre lawn with tall trees lining the perimeter. I was tired and decided to get my ritual glass of milk before bed when I stood up and saw what was glaring at me through the glass door. It was tall, taller than the door itself. It was skinny in the torso, but its chest was broad. It was white, with tall ears. I want to say it looked like the white version of Donnie Darko. I was about 15 feet from the glass door. I froze. It didn't move. It just kept looking at me. It could not have been anyone else because we lived in the middle of the woods. I started calling for my brother's name, but Dan wasn't answering me. I started to get louder, now calling for my mom. Her room was on the other side of the couch, so she was there in a heartbeat. She looked at the back door, then at Dan, and then told me to just sit back down. I couldn't understand why I was the only one freaking out. I lay on the couch facing away from the glass door. Dan put a blanket on me, and we both fell asleep on the couch. Well, in 2021, Dan called me from jail, he's been in and out since I was 13. This is how the conversation went, Dan, hey, can I ask you something? Me, what's up? Dan, do you remember that night? Me, what night? Dan, that night where you were freaking out, we were young. Remember that tall scary looking thing that was at the back door? Me, I had a flashback of that night. Dan, look, I had a dream about it last night, and I wanted to tell you that I saw it too. I was too scared to do anything. Mom saw it also. The conversation ended because he only had so much time on the phone. I felt relief, knowing I wasn't just having a schizophrenic hallucination episode but my body went numb from the memory of being so scared. I told my significant other about it, he's my best friend. My significant other told me that I came face to face with a windigo, and he wasn't surprised because of the small country town I lived in. When I looked up what a windigo was, my heart sank. That's what I saw. Now, I think about it every day. It's been a year since I was reminded of it. I believe it still follows me. I'm a park ranger who witnessed something strange. So, it's Christmas Eve, and that means holiday cheer. However, for me that always means work. I work at a national park, so I will not say the name for my privacy. Anyway, I work as a park ranger, and I always work around the holidays. Despite what my coworkers think I don't mind the holidays. I just like the alone time, not many park rangers work around the holidays. Sure it's extra work, but it's always fine. Anyway, I'm telling you about this because of a strange occurrence I experienced yesterday. It was a slow day, most people were at home celebrating. I got a call on my radio about a missing hiker. It wasn't too far from my location so I took it. I hopped into my jeep and drove over there. As I was driving I noticed a big lump on the path. I got out of my car and walked towards it, it reeked. Unfortunately, I recognized the smell. It was a dead animal, I turned on my flashlight and it was a deer, its throat was slashed open and much worse was done to it. I'm used to seeing dead animals, but what happened to this deer made me want to vomit. I shivered, I grabbed a box from my pocket and pulled out a cigarette, and lit it with my lighter. It warmed my body in the frozen air. It's a bad habit I've been trying to break but I just can never break it. I went back to my car to call it in and drove past it. Then I heard the worst, and my tire popped. I went out to check it and it appeared that it was popped by a sharp rock. Unfortunately, I already used my spare tire and forgot to replace it. It appeared I would be walking, 
The missing hiker was only about a mile away, anyway. I looked up to see the clouds pull apart to reveal the full moon. I quickly heard a woman scream. I ran towards the shout. Miss? Where are you? I screamed. The scream became more beastly and animalistic. I turned on my flashlight when I stepped on something. Torn clothes, and a boot, women's size 7. Then as I was walking, I heard a branch break behind me. I turned around to see animalistic eyes. They looked almost human. I put my flashlight on the pair of eyes. It appeared wolf-like. I dropped my flashlight in fear. My brain screamed to run. My legs began to make me move in the opposite direction from whatever that thing was. I knew whatever it was chasing me. I heard its footsteps behind me. I ran praying that I could get away. I decided to head to my car. But the worst that could happen, happened. I tripped and tumbled down a hill hitting my head on a rock on the way down. Everything was becoming a blur, and I felt whatever it was bite down on my shoulder. As if instinct I grabbed my gun, remembering it was there I fired off randomly hoping I hit it. It ran off making sounds of pain. I knew I couldn't let myself pass out, I felt around my belt and couldn't find my flare. I began crawling around in pain hoping I'd find it. I felt my arm getting numb. I laid over facing the sky with my gun clenched in my hand. Hoping it wouldn't come back. Everything went black, I woke up shortly after in a ranger jeep. It was the new guy. My arm was poorly tied with a rag. He looked over at me. You got pretty banged up, what the hell attacked you? He asked. A monster I responded. I don't remember what he said as I zoned out. Eventually we got to the ER, and they stitched me up. Today strange things have been happening. When I was trying to sleep I couldn't get a wink of sleep, I was just so hungry, I went to the fridge and ate the raw steak, eating every bit of it. I keep biting my tongue, it appears as if my teeth have gotten sharper too, the park said I could take the day off, but I refused. My arm feels better already. It's strange, I'm a bit worried if I'll see that thing again and if it will be my end on Christmas Eve, but I have to figure out what that thing is and make sure it can't hurt anyone. I also know what it's done to me. If anyone has info on the creature please tell me. In June of 2006, four of us were on a training mission north of Camp Lejeune near the town of Jacksonville. We pulled off next to a field and all went down into the field, laid around for about an hour after taking in the sun. Being out in the brush for most of the morning, there was nothing but woods as far as you could see, even behind us. No traffic, no sounds of really any kind. We didn't think too much about it since we were taking a break. There was a rise in the field that I had to stand up to look over. As soon as I stood up, I saw what looked like two black things laying down on the edge of the wood line about 200 yards away. As soon as they saw me, they stood up and they started walking off at a brisk pace. I immediately drew my M4 carbine and told everybody else to stay low. I fired off one round towards them at their feet, which is what I was taught to do if you are trying to get somebody's attention. The two subjects immediately began sprinting towards the woods, which only made me now more nervous. I was taught that you don't run from somebody trying to contact you. After they disappeared, I told everybody else to stand up. We all took off for our vehicles. We didn't say much after until we got back to base. The next day, we got together and talked about what had happened. We agreed that the subjects were both male and they were both around 5 8 to 6 feet tall. They ran like track athletes or soldiers, not like lumbering large people who are overweight. One of the guys on our team was a good shot. We all decided that he would be the one who would shoot the subject if we ever ran into them again. He's 6 to 2, around 215 pounds, and in good shape. The next time we went on a training mission, there were only 4 of us instead of 5, so somebody stayed behind for some reason. We were out there for almost three days. We got back to camp on a Friday night, and everybody was eager to get home for the weekend. On Saturday, we all went down into town to eat. I didn't say much about what had happened, 
Just that I felt uneasy being out there alone without a team. One of the guys on our team, let's call him Sam, was really freaked out by it and did not want to ever go back into that field again. He told me he heard moaning sounds coming from the woods while we were out there. When I asked him if he thought they could have been animals, he said no, that it was too loud and sounded like it came from two different people. I didn't really know what to say since I had only heard the sounds once when I stood up quickly but never when lying down in the grass like we had. I had no idea he had heard them. Sam was convinced that there were people out there. He wanted me to tell the team leader about it. I told him that I would tell him about it the next time we went out on a training mission. He was really scared, so he wanted to go back and investigate further with me. I informed him no. About a week later, we were all at the team leader's house waiting for him to get home from work, and I told him about what had happened. They laughed at first, but none of them had heard the moaning sounds or seen anything on their patrols. The team leader, let's call him Rich, told us that he did not want us to come back out there without a full team of people just in case it was true. I agreed with him and was glad that he felt that way. I can see that so far, nothing has happened yet, but I'll let you know as soon as we do. Last note, I believe the two figures we saw were juvenile or adolescent Sasquatch, seemingly caught off guard. I've never encountered a Wendigo, but when I was staying out in Arizona with a friend, I heard some very, very strange sounds in the desert. My friend couldn't hear them, but I clearly heard what sounded like a child crying, or squealing. I went out to the back patio of the trailer we were in and listened hard, and it creeped me out infinitely when I could still hear the sounds, exactly the same, never changing pitch or cadence. My friend, even standing right where my feet were planted, still could not hear the sounds. I thought I was going nuts. The next day, I related my experience to Gary, an older relative of my friend, who related to me an encounter he had almost 30 years before that day. Gary told me about how he lived on the outskirts of a reservation where people had gone missing in alarming amounts. No mass disappearances at one time, but a steady increase in missing persons reports that left tribal law enforcement and local law enforcement at odds with one another and very suspicious that a serial killer may be on the loose. During a joint investigation, both law agencies went house to house interviewing residents close to where most of the people were last seen asking them what kind of information they could provide. When they got to where Gary was staying, they were asking questions about strange sounds and sightings in the mountainous area directly next to the reservation. Gary thought it was odd, but informed them that once in a while, he'd hear a child crying out near the entrance to the mountain trail and go out in his truck looking to see if anyone was lost. He never saw any people but noted that the usually buzzing surroundings were so still that it unnerved him. One night in particular, Gary said he saw what looked like six stag in the woods not far up the path leading to the start of the mountain trail. He said it was pale, with visible antlers and it looked like it was laying down on its front hooves and struggling to get up. Gary explained that he stepped out of his truck with his flashlight, turned to grab his rifle and by the time he looked back up the trail, the stag was gone. It was at this point where a stench so foul overtook him that his eyes stung and he involuntarily gagged and had to hold back his dinner. He described it as an earthy, sticky, palpable musk smell that had a sweet after stench to it. He also said it smelled like rotted meat and copper. He was immediately beset with a feeling of mortal dread, and had to contain his panic as he jumped back into his truck. He said as he was backing up to leave the narrow trail, he heard, clear as day, almost as if it was right in the truck with him, a child's cry. Only this close, I sounded more like a powerful wail that was impossible for a child to emit. He hightailed it out of there and was in the process of looking for a new place to live. He said he had trouble sleeping for a while after that night, due to constant nightmares of things banging on his windows. After he told the police this account, he said the two officers looked at one another, shared some kind of non-verbal interaction, thanked him for his time and asked him to call the station instantly if he heard any strange sounds or saw anything. Before they left, 
He said he asked them how many other people reported seeing or hearing something similar to what he just told them. They responded that at least one person from each house they visited reported hearing children crying in the night, with other residents of the same household claiming to never have heard or seen anything unusual. They also said that at least one other person they interviewed had seen a pale-looking creature on the mountain, which they thought was a big cat of some sort. What impacted Gary the most though, was when one of the tribal officers told him that, while interviewing the family of a missing person, they related that in the weeks leading up to their child's disappearance, their child had been suffering from nightmares of demon deers outside of their window and drew many pictures of what it looked like. Gary asked if they had the pictures, and the officer produced a Polaroid taken of the drawing. It looked almost exactly like what he'd seen that night on the Mount Rail. Pale, skinny, big antlers. Except this drawing had features he was fortunate to not have seen in person, huge red eyes, sharp bloody teeth and claws and a black hole next to it with arms sticking out of it. Gary moved two days after this. After Gary finished telling me that story, he laughed heartily, probably at the horrified expression on my face. He said don't worry, as long as you don't follow the cries, you will be alright. I've never forgotten that story. I admit that Gary could very well have been pranking me, because he was a jokester, but no one else in the home seemed to be amused when he told me the story, and his demeanor was very serious. I believe that he experienced what he related, because I heard the cries in the night for myself, clear as crystal, while my friend heard nothing, even while I was actively listening to the wailing of a child crying. My story of what is apparently a Wendigo, even though I don't think it really was, I don't really quite believe the Wendigo legend but I believe the creatures exist, reposted here because someone in the comments told me to recount my incident. Okay. This happened years ago, but it still stuck with me for so long. I've explained this many times before already, and the whole thing has even been narrated on one of those scary stories YouTube channels. Darkness prevails so I'm just going to be plain and simple and avoid more unnecessary details. I woke up one morning to the sound of my open screen window being scratched at, coupled with heavy, raspy breathing. I turned over on my stomach and looked out at the window from over my bed, the window was right behind my head when I slept. What I saw, in my window, was an incredibly pale and thin humanoid being. I couldn't make out a nose, or ears, but the eyes were the most captivating because they were shining and looking around my room. I could have sworn they glowed a slight blue color, but that's cliche and I know that animals' eyes can't really do that, it had thin lips, if you can even call them lips, and a very long, bone-thin arm with long fingers that were lightly and periodically scratching the screen. Not like it was trying to tear through it, but that it was just making noise. I don't think it ever saw me, or I didn't see it notice me, but I sprang out of bed after I got a look at it and hid shaking on my couch until morning. A few months later that summer, I went camping. Right before everyone got into their tents, everyone froze stiff when a long, echoing scream rang through I the forest. Nobody could tell how close it sounded. It sounded like a mix between a person, couldn't tell if man or woman, mixed with an animal. It was like two or more voices were blended together into the same pitch, a kind of Frankenstein voice. Frankenstein scream. I know some people might tell me maybe it was a fox or a mountain lion or something. I wanted it to be. I was camping with some very experienced woodsy guys, and they told me that it wasn't like anything they'd ever heard before. Even then, I looked up what foxes and cougars sound like when they scream as soon as I could and they sound distinctly canine and feline. If I heard them now, I would immediately be able to tell, and I recall that it sounded nothing like them. Everyone got into their tents anyway, and tried to sleep. That night apparently, as my dad told me in the morning, he went with me, he woke up in the middle of the night to something really tall scratching at the side of our big boxy family tent. He saw a long-fingered impression being made on the nylon, that slowly slid down the side. Slow and deliberate. He said that he laid still and watched it, and then it stopped and moved away to other tents. 
he heard scratching at other tents too. Even though I didn't see this, I can't shake the feeling that it was the same weird thing from the months before. That it either followed me somehow, or there's multiple of them. I can't decide which option scares me the most. I also had that scream to go off of, and I swear it's the most haunting and unearthly thing I've ever heard. I don't even live anywhere with huge forests nearby. I live in central Illinois, in a neighborhood a good drive away from deep woods. I don't know what that thing was, or why it was in my window, or what it wanted, but I saw it. You don't have to believe me, I don't expect anyone to, I'm only sharing my story. If you don't believe me, please don't be demeaning. I'm not stupid. Edit, the window in question is a good three feet off the ground, and this thing was hunched over. If it stood tall, I'd say it would be about seven to eight feet. I had an encounter with something like this near the old Alton Bridge in Denton, Texas. I had been out there a couple of times but after dark you felt a very ominous presence set in. At night I would hear something tapping on the trees across the river bank. It sounded like a hatchet repeatedly chopping away at the oak. I caught figures hiding behind trees in the opposite ends of the river banks watching me through my thermal cam. In the pitch black. The closest I got to whatever was out there was when I was hiking with my mom on Mother's Day. After the sunset, my sister got scared, and we decided to get out of there as fast as possible. Something was following us in the treetops. You could hear it crawling through keeping pace with us. It sounded big like a chimpanzee or something. My mom is verified crazy and a heavy believer in the paranormal. She walked directly up to it in the trees and tried to talk to it. The noises that it made I'll never forget. It made a weird guttural noises and then something that sounded like the predator click. I pulled my mom away and got the F out of there. The old Alton Bridge would be a good place to hunt after dark. I'm not too keen on Windigo lore, but I found my way to this post as a result of something that happened to me recently. I have had countless brushes with paranormal forces or entities, but will not pretend to fully understand any of them. I was staying in a B&B on a recent trip. It was set up like a hostel with regards to the fact that there were multiple, up to four, beds in one room. My room had only two, and after getting in late, I was given a tour of the home and then I went straight to sleep. I woke up at 2.30 am and knew somehow that I was in a dream state despite the home being the exact same. I think it was the color change in the room it was like a bluish filter had been applied to my visual field. I could feel myself being pulled, as if by a cord of some type, not unlike my one other legitimate experience with an OBE, to the common area or living room of the home. When I arrived in the living area. I felt an overwhelming need to gather my surroundings. Upon turning about the room, I saw a six to seven foot wide of snow, like imagined skin that had never seen the sun, humanoid thing standing behind the catty cornered couch. Its emaciated appearance, lack of any hair, and hollowed out jawline were grotesque but the thing that stood out most was its lips or teeth. The lips were between pale pink and blood red. Now for the most terrifying part. It started to briskly walk towards me. It finally opened its mouth when it got closer in what I assume was blood, even assuming this was some messed up projection of my subconscious, began streaming from its lips as it wrestled me to the ground. It definitely seemed like it was trying to bite me. But it was oddly clumsy, and I ended up being able to pin this thing on its back and suffocate it via pushing in its windpipe. Immediately after it stopped moving, I felt like I snapped back upstairs it was like half moving and half floating. I then actually woke up in the bed at 2.36 am. In that moment, I felt a rush of terror and that familiar feeling of knowing something or someone is watching you. I distinctly felt something climb into bed behind me. I was laying on my left side, and this thing laid down, I could feel the pressure in the bed, beside me, and proceeded to put its fingers possessively on my side. I stayed frozen until I felt it dissipate. I then went back to sleep. I have seen countless shadow people, and a few light or dark energies, 
what many people would immediately label as angels or demons, but this was a first. Just reporting for the time being. Thanks for reading. I was camping at Heart Mountain Hot Springs. At 6.45 AM I was leaving my campsite by foot to use the nearest bathroom. The campsite sits above the field overlooking the road that runs west to other campsites, a field, creek and the three hot springs pools. As I was walking out of my sight I looked across the field and saw an animal. It was at least 200 feet away. I thought it was a wild horse, but there are no wild horses in the Heart Mountain National Antelope Refuge. This animal's body was facing me, south, with its head turned slightly to its left. I thought it was a horse because it had a black mane of hair and its body was brown and shiny. It appeared to be about the size of a yearling at first. I say at first because later I saw a human man in the same location. There's a path there from the west campsites that travels to the parking lot by the east campsites, and I now believe the creature was 7 feet to 8 feet tall. It turned its head right directly toward me then it turned its body leftward, east, and walked across the parking lot toward the bridge across the creek and I lost sight of it in the trees. It was bipedal. It did not move quickly walking with its back slightly forward and arms swinging at its sides. I later looked for footprints. The ground was too hardened to find any. I crossed the bridge and walked a little up the creek, north, looking for any evidence like hair and could not locate anything. What do you think? My only thoughts are either a person dressed in some kind of ceremonial gear or animal skins, although the height makes that unlikely, or an animal with chronic wasting disease, which also seems unlikely given that it was bipedal. My family and I have a new puppy that we take outside to walk in the middle of the night. This was around 4 in the morning and she let me know she had to go out. She has always been very intimidated going out in the middle of the night but never thought anything of it. Just as I was about to bring her inside I hear this howl, human sounded screech that sounded like it was right behind me. Puppy and I ran so fast in the house. The scream that came out of my body was so bizarre I just froze in fear as soon as I got inside. My husband was very concerned and immediately locked the doors and brought all of our kids in bed with us lol. We are trying to chalk up to maybe a fox? I would normally talk myself into it just being an animal but the weird vib I got. I can't even describe it. The howl or scream sounded like it was right in my ear. I will never be going outside alone again. When I went to college, I befriended a professor of mathematics. He was one of the most intelligent, eloquent, and articulate people that I've ever known. A remarkable family man, who married in his 20s, with a daughter and a son. He never drank or smoke, never used drugs, never permitted himself to curse, raise his voice, or become aggressive even in disagreements. He was always in control, always punctual and on time always organized and very disciplined. And he wore clothing that would not look out of place at the turn of the 20th century, and acted like a true gentleman. I'm just telling you what kind of man he was, not a crazy man, not a junkie, no mental illnesses. I had the pleasure of taking advanced algebra, calculus 1, calculus 2, and differential equations with him. Anyway, we had this STEM club room in the math department where we students hang out to study and chit-chat. And sometimes our professor would join us for help with tutoring, homework, exam study help, and just discussions about various unrelated topics. One time he told us a story about when he something strange in the woods. This happened during the 90s, when he was a teenager. He lived in Quincy, California during that time. And he had a hobby of driving his dad's old beat-up truck all over the Sierra Nevada mountains, just for exploring and also for hunting animals and gathering wild berries. He liked following old mining roads and seeing where they led. One such time he was out looking for blackberries to pick. It was getting late and the sun had set. So he was driving down this narrow road when he saw there was an obstruction in the road. 
He saw, it looked like someone had stretched a giant plastic bag across the road. He thought it might have been construction work or something. As he drove up to what he thought was a plastic bag stretched across the road, he stopped his vehicle within like 40 feet of it. And he saw that it was not a plastic bag. It was some kind of screen or curtain, a two-dimensional flat shape, stretching over the road, perpendicular to it. It was a rectangular shape, with the width of the road, and about 1.5 times in height. And he saw that it was translucent, like some kind of hologram. It was like semi-transparent, because when my professor shine a flash light through the rectangle, the light penetrated through it, illuminating the road past it, but just barely, like the light only went a foot or two beyond that screen. It was just standing or floating there, and yet it was not attached to anything. It held its own weight, but it was like weightless at the same time. Its surface was like wavy or rippling. My professor got out of the car to investigate this strange floating rectangle. He went right up to it, and as he did, it was like it was emitting a vibration or low humming, that he could feel in his bones. There was an effect that the closer to the rectangle, the stronger the vibration was on the objects around it. And as he got close to it, he saw the hair on his arms standing up, like there was some kind of energy in the air. And there were dense trees on each side of the road, so he couldn't go around this rectangle in the middle of the road. He went up to the trees, and broke off a branch. He then poked the branch into this rectangle, and he saw subtle ripples going up and down through the rectangle from the place where he touched the surface. And he stuck the stick all the way into the rectangle, and there was no resistance, but he didn't see the stick going through the other side of the rectangle. It was like it disappeared or became invisible. And then he pulled it out, and the stick was unchanged, not burned or deformed. Not knowing what this rectangle was, he went back to his car, continually looking at the rectangle. He didn't want to risk driving through the rectangle. So he drove his car in reverse until the road became wide enough to turn around and head back where he came from. To this day, he doesn't know what it was. He said it looked like a two-dimensional shape, like a semi-transparent rectangle stretched across the road, perpendicular to the surface of the road. He didn't even know how it was possible for a two-dimensional shape to be floating like that. But he saw it with his own eyes. I don't know if he ever went back there to find out. He didn't elaborate. He didn't even say where exactly this was. This was just when we were chatting in the club room after 6 p.m., doing homework or just resting and eating snacks. And I never got back into contact with him after graduating, moving out of that college town, and then the pandemic hit. I don't know, but I suspect that's one of the things that pushed him to become a professor of mathematics, seeing a rectangle in the middle of the road. That's not something that happens every day, now is it? Anyway, that's all I know. I'm writing this post while the incident is still fresh in my mind. It occurred around midnight of Saturday September 2nd and each day that goes by I feel more unsure about what I really heard that night. To preface, this took place in the Olympic Peninsula, along the Hood Canal. My girlfriend's parents recently bought a beautiful riverfront property in a rural area, down a private gravel road that has a few other houses here and there. Their property is heavily forested on all sides, though the neighbors' houses are vaguely visible to both the left and right. The night was winding down after watching a movie, everyone had gone to sleep while I lay awake playing on my phone. The windows were open, letting in the pleasant sound of the river bubbling outside. Close to midnight, I started hearing splashing in the river, which startled my dog but was easily explainable as elk or deer crossing the river since the area is very wild. However, after the splashing subsided I started hearing a repeated animal cry, that sounded like a sort of bellow mixed with a scream or yell. It's hard to remember exactly at this point in time, but it was deep, not like a cougar or fox screaming, and fast in cadence. Definitely odd but still explainable as an animal. This happened for 10 minutes or so, intermittently with what sounded like a huffing or snorting sound. I was alert at this point, 
listening and trying to calm my dog who was unsettled by the sound as well. As I listened, it started moving closer, at first sounding like it was across the river but now on the right side of the house. As it moved closer, it transformed into what sounded like a human screaming help. In the most deranged, unsettling way possible. Like it was screaming help but couldn't quite form or enunciate the words correctly. It literally gives me goosebumps thinking about it right now. At this point, I was thinking what the F and woke up my girlfriend. We listened together in silence and rushed to wake up her parents when we both heard a pronounced help in the scream. Both dogs started going ballistic and the screaming stopped at some point in the commotion, so her parents didn't get a good grasp on the sound. After shining flashlights out the windows, we went downstairs and made sure all the doors and windows were locked. After a sleepless night, we woke up and walked the perimeter or the property and found no sign of animals or humans. I was half expecting to see bloody human remains or something with how intense the screams were, I imagine that's what a person being axe murdered would sound like. At this point I really regret not going outside, armed, to investigate, as I've spent the past two days constantly racking my brain trying to figure out exactly WTF that was. I've looked into every animal sound out there and haven't found a single thing that actually sounds similar to what we heard that night. I'd probably think I imagined the whole thing if my girlfriend hadn't heard it as well. I'd love to hear any thoughts and or or similar experiences from this community. There is a little hot springs nestled near the peak of the Pasimaroy Pass in central Idaho. Though it is hidden in plain sight, sitting quite literally on the shoulder of the road, it is not a well-known attraction outside of the valley. But the local ranchers are quite familiar with Barney Hot Springs. It's not unusual to drive by on the weekends and see several families enjoying the water. Barney Hot Springs, or simply Barney's, is incredibly remote, even for Idaho standards. It's at least an hour of driving, over ruddy dirt roads, to the small town of Salmon to the north. If you need a hospital it's over two hours to the regional hospital in Idaho Falls to the south. To say you're in the middle of nowhere at Barney's is an understatement. But the seclusion is one of Barney's major drawing points. That, and the odd abundance of tropical fish swimming in the year-round warm waters. You can sit back, relax, and take in the surrounding views of the mighty Rocky Mountains with little in the way of distraction. But Barney's isn't all it seems to be on the surface. An event 40 years ago turned this little hot spring from a local retreat, to a local nightmare. On the afternoon of October 27th two truckers stopped for fuel at my parents' gas station and cafe in Howe, Idaho. They were hauling a load of hay over the Pasimaroy Pass headed for a delivery point somewhere in Utah. As the truck fueled the two men settled down at the cafe counter and ordered coffees. Sipping his coffee, the older trucker struck up a conversation with my mother and the regulars in the cafe. He seemed a bit on edge, but was normal in comparison to his younger partner. That young man was clearly shaken and didn't say more than a quiet yes, ma'am or no, ma'am to my mom. He kept his attention on the cup of coffee he cradled in his shaking hands. As the older trucker and the others conversed, he brought up a peculiar event that had happened to them that afternoon. They had crested the Pasimaroy Pass and were coming down into the little lost valley. As they approached Barney Hot Springs, standing in the middle of the road, was what looked to be a child. Bringing the truck to a stop they soon realized in horror and fascination what was before them. It was not a child, but an odd, humanoid creature. Its body was slim, with long, slender limbs, and a squat little torso. The head and eyes were large and amphibian-like. It was not standing any taller than a preschooler. They could see its green skin shimmer in the brilliant midday sun. Dripping with water, it was clutching a large bundle of what could only be described as hundreds of eggs. The creature watched the truck come to a stop then awkwardly walked over the rest of the road and down an embankment. It was obvious from the trail of water it left behind that it had just come from Barney Hot Springs. On the other side of the road was a small stream hidden in dense willow bushes. 
No sooner had the creature disappeared, the two truckers were driving away as fast as their Cummins engine would take them. My mom and a few regulars at the cafe took in the man's story with silent, somber expressions and comforting head nods. This wasn't the first time strange things had been witnessed in the little lost valley. Of course, a frogman carrying his brood certainly was the most unique story they had heard in a long time. The regulars told the trucker not to get too worked up over the incident, as it could have been the autumn sun playing tricks on their eyes. The reassurance seemed to calm the men. They finished their coffees in a few quick gulps and headed out the door. My mom and the regulars had a good chuckle over the men's story and went on with their day. The following morning, on October 28, one of the largest earthquakes ever recorded in Idaho struck the area. The Bora Peak earthquake was a magnitude 7 and could be felt hundreds of miles away. It destroyed farm infrastructure, roads, and bridges. It even killed two children on their way to school when a brick building in Shally, Idaho collapsed on top of them. It was a horrific and frightening day for everyone in Idaho. Barney Hot Springs was not far from the earthquake's epicenter and did not escape its wrath. A couple passing visitors near the springs that morning watched in amazement as the water drained into the earth leaving behind a stinking, mucky hole. Minutes later, to their further astonishment, the water came splashing back into the depression, but was now boiling hot. It was a truly bizarre geologic event to see. The boiling stopped immediately after the earthquake ceased and the water at Barney's quickly cooled. It's now more of a warm springs, having permanently lost about 15 degrees of temperature after the earthquake. The frogman has been seen a handful of times since that initial sighting. Always near Barney's and almost always standing in the road. I like to think the frogman was just a doting parent getting their babies out of harm's way before the earthquake struck and annihilated everything in the hot springs. Barney Hot Springs is still a widely popular spot for the locals. No one seems too bothered by the idea of sharing the water with a little odd amphibian man and his family. Someone even reintroduced the tropical fish after the boiling incident killed all of them. It remains just one of the many weird stories to come out of the Lost Rivers area of Idaho where I grew up. The very first time I went to my boyfriend's family's house, we explored the very wooded areas around the house, 30 acres of land, some hunters go in, but no hikers, only old logging trails which the original owner of the house probably created. A lot of the trails are not well maintained, with brush and logs over them. One area my boyfriend wanted to show me was off trail. I hate walking off trail, I hate bushwhacking, and this was in the spring, so there were ticks. He brings me to a huge boulder he calls Dragon Mountain. Normal boulder, near a very small stream. He climbs up and then helps me up. It was much taller than me, but by no means gargantuan. We sit on the boulder, then lie down looking up into the trees, talking. I am on the left, my boyfriend is on the right. I don't remember if we heard the crunching of leaves first or saw them first, but to our east three adult men, all wearing black or dark navy blue from head to toe, in sunglasses, are walking toward the boulder carrying a large long black tube. All three of them are carrying it together, and none of them are talking. They are just walking, carrying this thing. My boyfriend and I are extremely still. We did not get the urge to say hello or say anything to them, like we would to normal people we encounter hiking in the woods. They are walking toward us, but we don't think they can see us, because we are lying in a sort of large divot in the top of the boulder. We can hear the men walk behind where we are on the boulder, then when they are to our southwest, very near the boulder, they stop completely. They do not talk or make any noise. Naturally my boyfriend and I stay silent and still. We are looking at each other, trying to take this in. It felt like a long time that there were no walking noises. The men then walked sort of around the left of us and the boulder, then walked off toward our northwest. They were still not talking at all, just walking through the woods, holding their black tube. We were very weirded out for a long time after this, 
and we got out of those woods pretty quickly in a direction away from them, opting to get to the road and follow that home instead of taking the quickest route toward the house, which was pretty much in their direction. We have both racked our brains for years about this, coming up with all kinds of explanations. My boyfriend later realized that the direction they came from is from a major highway, where there is a fence as well. We conjectured they may have been hunters, with the black tube being a device to carry a deer, but a lot of hunters live around there and tend to wear camouflage and orange, not all black or navy or dark colors in general. I get if they were hunting they would likely be quiet, but they did make a fair amount of noise with their footsteps. Why did they stop? It just did not seem like three normal guys going through the woods. I forget about this encounter periodically, but when I suddenly remember it, I cannot explain why I felt the way I felt. We both had the instinct to hide and be silent. Not sure this is the appropriate forum, since what I thought was a scary encounter turned out to have a normal explanation. Anyway, here goes. I had bought a house with a steep backyard that sloped down 40 to some thick woods. In the fall I started building a retaining wall, to get a level space. I mostly worked on it the evenings, after work. At this particular time I was cutting a trench in the hillside to lay in a dead man. If you aren't familiar with the term, a dead man is simply a log or railroad tie, laid in a trench parallel to the wall, further up the hillside. Cables are run from it down to the wall through the dirt. The dead man acts like an anchor to keep the wall from bowing out from the weight of the earth it is holding back. Anyway, this night I was hurrying to get the trench finished. I had put the railroad tie in the trench and it wasn't laying flat, so I pulled it partially out, with one end resting on the edge of the trench, and was digging beneath it in the bottom of the trench with a hand trowel. The sun had set and it was really getting too dark to work. It was one of those cold, crisp autumn nights, with dry leaves skittering along pushed by a hissing wind. The moon had come up over the horizon and was shining through the trees. I was laying flat on the cold grass with my arm digging at the trench under the railroad tie. I had just about decided to quit for the evening when I felt my hand grabbed by something from the bottom of the trench. With claws. I shrieked like a little girl. That old fight or flight reflex started with vengeance. I must have levitated to my feet, and was just about to push the railroad tie back into the hole, to crush whatever the hell it was that had grabbed me. I hesitated for a moment, in that instant, my neighbor's cat poked his head up from the trench. It must have crawled in, unnoticed, from the other end of the trench, and had been attracted by my digging motions. That cat never knew had clothes it had come to being cat pate. I've had a few other weird incidents in my life, as I imagine most people have, but this was the one I remember that scared me the most, and yet had the most mundane possible explanation. My encounter happened in February of 2007. I used to work third shift at a paper stock factory warehouse. The main day shift supervisor was on vacation, so our boss on night shift decided she wanted to leave early, so she let us sneak off about two hours earlier than our normal shift end time. So this would have been between 4.30 to 5 a.m. I was following a co-worker down this county road, as the warehouse was on the outskirts of my small rural town. I noticed he hit his brakes, and proceeded to swerve off the road. I'm probably 1000 FT behind him and I'm thinking to myself what the heck is this dude doing? And that's when I saw it. There was a tall, dark shape strolling down the middle of the road, in a hunched over and swaying side to side sort of manner. I have likened it to how one of those tall wind blower figures you see swaying at a car dealership or something like that moved. Very unnatural movements. I can't do it justice by describing it as it would only really make sense if someone saw it themselves I feel like. It looked like a tall person wrapped in a large dark blanket or cloak. I had to hit the brakes and swerve too but I came to a full stop. Whatever it was, I couldn't make out any features or characteristics. I saw a large torso with two legs. 
The upper half was hunched forward as if it was leaning like an older person would with a walker. Now at that time, I was driving a 1998 Ford Explorer and I've looked up the height of the vehicle and it lists it as around 67 but whatever walked past my driver's window was a good foot or more higher than that, leaning forward. So I believe whatever was walking was over 7 foot tall minimum. Again, I could not see a head, any arms, just a figure with legs walking. My taillights illuminated it as I started to drive past it. I couldn't make out any definite details for the body. I didn't see fur, skin or anything like clothing. It was solid, not like a translucent type of thing. It was just large, thick and black or at the very least dark gray in color. My coworker had pulled over into a parking lot a little ways down the road and I followed him in and you could tell he was scared. He was saying something along the lines of what was that? It didn't have a head. Among a lot of other things most panicked people say. We decided to drive back down and try to see if it's still there, and what it actually is. I drove in front and he was following behind. We come up to the general area and I notice there's a large black animal laying in the middle of the road. It appeared to be a big black dog. Part of me knew this wasn't large enough to be what was walking in the road but we had to stop because it was directly in the middle of the roadway. I decided to get out and walk up to it, all the while my coworker is yelling at me to get back in my vehicle. As I approach whatever is laying in the road, it brings its head up and looks back at me. Its eyes are glowing yellow, which I write off as I shine from the headlights, but it growls at me. So I stop dead in my tracks and just watch. This thing stands up on its back legs like a person, but falls back down. It sits back up and hobbles off to the side of the road like a wounded animal that wasn't able to use its front legs. It looked like your typical German Shepherd or Wolf type face but its fur was puffy like a chow dog's. It was a lot bigger than most dogs, but still nowhere as tall as whatever was walking down the road. I didn't see any blood or wounds, so I can't say if it was actually hurt or not. My coworker got out of the car by this point after it had disappeared into the wood line. We discussed what the heck just happened, but while we were talking, I noticed next to our feet was a mouse. It was just standing there with us, but it was cleaning itself. I nudged it with my shoe and it just kept cleaning its face, as if it wasn't afraid of us. The mouse was sitting in the upright position as in it was on its hind legs, and using its front paws to wipe itself. I never really considered it until recently that all three of these bizarre happenings was all on two legs. We got back in vehicles and drove off and then the next time at work, I had mentioned what happened and our co-workers laughed at us, so the other guy who saw it told me if I don't stop talking about it, he's just going to deny it and I best just forget about it. So for essentially 15 years I never told anyone up until recently. I have tried to rationalize it into something that makes sense, but even then it doesn't completely add up. I have tried to explain it away as it was just a large dog that must have gotten hit by another vehicle before my coworker and I got there. Maybe it was messing around with the mouse, and it got hit which broke its front legs so that's why it was trying to use its back legs. The mouse was traumatized from the dog trying to mess with it, so it was just standing there cleaning the dog slobber off itself. That sounds at least plausible until the original thing we saw walking without a head. The dog was nowhere as tall as that thing was, so even with the dog standing upright, it was close to 6 foot roughly, but whatever was walking had to have been over 7 foot tall as it was so much taller than my explorer even with it hunched forward. I can explain away the dog and mouse, but I can't just explain what that was, so I'm back at square one trying to understand what it could have possibly be. As someone who's always been very skeptical, it becomes very hard to accept the unacceptable. I have always been interested in weird creatures and such, but I never truly believed they existed. I still struggle to believe that all these crazy stories could be true, and yet who am I to say they aren't? especially with the weird crap that my former co-worker and I went through that night. All I know is what I saw, but whatever I saw is something I don't know and probably never will. It sounds crazy, and I personally would be hesitant to believe it if someone else told me this happened to them, but that's what happened.
Spending the week at my uncle's cabin near LJ in North Georgia had always been a peaceful getaway from the hustle and bustle of city life. Surrounded by dense forests and tranquil landscapes, it was the perfect place to escape. However, one night would change the way I viewed those woods forever. It was a crisp autumn evening when I decided to step out onto the back porch for a quiet smoke. The cabin was nestled deep in the woods, and the only source of light was the moon above. As I inhaled the cool mountain air, I couldn't help but notice a strange rustling sound coming from the trees. I dismissed it initially, thinking it might be some woodland creature going about its business. But then, the noises grew louder and closer. I squinted into the darkness, and my heart skipped a beat when I caught the glint of reflective eyes peering out from the shadows. Fear prickled at my skin as I realized something was out there, something I couldn't quite identify. Curiosity, or perhaps my need to rationalize the situation, led me to grab my phone and turn on its flashlight. The beam of light cut through the night, revealing the dense forest that surrounded the cabin. And then, I saw it again, those eyes, reflecting the light eerily. My heart raced, and I decided to record the strange encounter, convinced it might be a deer or some other innocent animal. Slowly, I approached the edge of the porch, trying to get a better view. As I got closer, my dread turned into sheer terror. It wasn't a deer or any creature I could recognize, it was the silhouette of a figure, a man-like shape standing there in the darkness. A shiver ran down my spine as I realized that this was no ordinary encounter. I stumbled back, dropping my phone, and the figure seemed to startle as well. It made a sudden movement, and without thinking, I darted back inside the cabin, locking the door behind me. For the rest of the night, I remained vigilant, my eyes fixed on the window overlooking the woods. I didn't dare venture outside again, and the fear of the unknown gnawed at me. The figure, whatever it was, never returned, leaving me to question my own sanity. Desperate for answers and reassurance, I decided to reach out to the local community. I posted my experience online, hoping someone nearby might have had similar encounters or could identify the mysterious figure in the video. As I waited for responses, I couldn't help but wonder what I had stumbled upon that night in the North Georgia woods. The uncertainty and fear of the unknown would haunt me for a long time, leaving me with a deep sense of unease every time I returned to my uncle's cabin near LJ where the woods held secrets I was not yet ready to uncover. Hey everyone, so this was 24 years ago on Nova Scotia. I was sitting on my grandma's porch having breakfast, it was still early dawn, forest was dark and past the clearing about 200 feet from the house. Saw these largish green eyes high up in the trees looking my direction. After 20 minutes I walked inside for a few minutes to clean up and came back outside to nothing. I've tried looking for what sort of critters live out that way, with green eye shine. Cougars are rare in Nova Scotia, opossums in the area extinct any regular explanation for tree dwelling large green eyes? This has been bothering me ever since it happened. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for daily stories. We at Horror Den of Misfits really enjoy this, and your support would be appreciated.